Hello, good people of God. I trust you are all doing well. I want to use this opportunity to welcome you all to the message where daily we load Christian content for seasoned men of God. Hi, dear. We want to build a community and a family with you. So if you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then like this message for us because we want to build a family together. Do want to always comment in the comment section and share this message abroad. I want you to share on your WhatsApp status. I want you to share on YouTube for us, even on Instagram and all social media platforms. I'll see you again. Be blessed as you listen to this message. There is no answer to prayers in heaven. There is no answer to prayers in heaven. And we let all the framework put out all the scriptures and the exegesis. And we also said that there is nothing that you need spiritual or natural that is in heaven right now. If what you need is spiritual, all spiritual blessings have been given to you in Christ. And Christ is in you. If it is natural, the earth is filled with God's goodness. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And these are the only two things you will need all your lifetime. Either the spiritual blessings in Christ in you or any things that are already on earth. So there is no answer to prayer coming from heaven. Psalm 24 verse 1. Psalms 24 verse number 1. Mm -mm. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Brother Paul is, I mean, the writer of, 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 I mean, Brother Paul quoted from Psalm 24 in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse number 24. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Next verse. Next verse. Whatsoever is sold in shambles, that it asks in no question for conscience sake. Next verse. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You know what, 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 what David was saying that Paul is repeating? This earth is filled. There is fullness. God created the earth and filled it with everything you will need all your lifetime. So the earth is filled with God's goodness. The, the fullness refers to the things on earth. So there is fullness in the earth that God has made. There has been no creation. Please listen carefully. God has created nothing anymore on earth after his creation in Genesis. Nothing more. And God is not going to add anything to the earth anymore. Everything you will need all of humanity's lifetime. When God created the earth, God put it in the earth because God sees the end from the beginning and knows the beginning from the end. So he knows all that we will need in this earth and he filled the earth with his riches. So there has been no addition since Genesis. The only thing God has added to the earth is the new creation. That's the only thing that God has added to the earth after Genesis. The new creation. So the earth has been such created that all the answers to people's needs are in the earth today. Everything that is as touching things, they are all on earth today. We said if they are spiritual in nature... Ephesians 1 3, you've been blessed with all of these spiritual blessings, or we have been blessed in the heavenly places with the blessings of the Spirit in Christ. James chapter 1, verse number 6, please pay attention. James chapter 1, verse number 6. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. Listen carefully. He first of all says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the giving God. He gives to all liberally. And he does not find fault. Settled. Let him ask in faith. Not in wavering. Not in wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. Driven with the wind and toast. Wow. What is asking 
Let him ask. Asking means to say or to make a demand. To say or to make a demand. Let him ask in faith. For example, if I'm talking about healing and I say Martin is a healer. Martin is a healer. He heals sickness and diseases. And then I say, faith. Faith. I am saying that you have to believe that Martin is a healer. I'm not teaching faith generally. I am speaking specifically that you have to believe as it relates to Martin the healer. He heals sicknesses and diseases. James 1 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Question. Who are you asking? God. Then he says, ask of God in faith. In faith of what? Ask of God believing that he does not find fault. The faith there is to believe that in God's personality that you are talking to, he doesn't find faith so you can be confident in your action. He doesn't find faith. You believe in his personality, in his character, in his disposition, that he is not a, fa a fault finder. You believe that God is the all-giving God that God is generous and does not withhold. So the faith there is specific as it regards to your knowledge of God. The knowledge of God that he is all-giving, he gives to all liberally and he does not upbraid. Please listen carefully. So, asking in faith will be asking in response to the fact you have just been told that God does not find fault. On that basis, you ask confidently that he is an all-giving God who gives to all men liberally and does not find fault. Now, nothing wavering Nothing wavering about the fact that God has a single character. Don't waver about the character of God. Don't waver. Or maybe God expects me to behave in a particular way before he answers my prayer. Or maybe that's wavering. You don't waver on the character of God as the all-giving all generous, non fault finding God who is delighted to give to all generously. <clears throat> Nothing wavering about that fact. Notice, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea. <laughs> Let not that man think. Uh, put it up for me. James 1, verse 6. Like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toast. Verse 7. For let not that man think, if he is wavering, if he is wavering about the character of God, if he doesn't have confidence that God gives generously and God does not find fault, he is wavering. If that man wavers on the character of this God he is talking to, let him not think that he shall receive. 
if your Bible is mine, I will underline receive. Let him not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Because when you are in doubt of someone's character, you can't even receive from him. It is not about you having faith to receive or having faith for God to give. It is about you having confidence to take what God gives. Now, did you observe? He didn't say, put up that verse 7 again. For let not that man think that he shall be given anything. Is that what he said? Why didn't they use, let him not think that he shall be given anything? Because he already told you that God does not find fault. Which means God will give whether you believe or not. But you that do not believe in God's character, you never think that you shall receive. So the faith is not for God to give. The faith is in you receiving. The faith is in you receiving. Because as far as God is concerned, God will give anyway. <laughs> you know, it was Kenneth Copeland that I was listening to some time back. I listened to him again last night. I was so blessed listening to him. You know, Kenneth Copeland for me is like home. When I'm listening to Kenneth Copeland, it's like I'm at home, you know, because my formative years as a child of God, my formative years were formed with Kenneth Copeland's teaching and his voice is in my DNA. Anywhere I hear Kenneth Copeland's voice, it's like I'm hearing God directly. Anywhere. Now, I, I might have certain areas where I do not disagree with Kenneth Copeland, okay? So don't go and begin to listen to Kenneth Copeland and say, Papa says he's the voice of God. <laughs> I have my disagreements with Kenneth Copeland on a number of issues. Scriptural. Okay. Now, but that doesn't still take away the fact that Kenneth Copeland has had so much influence on my life and still does. I, I was listening to him last night. I even played it openly in the room for Mama and I and I raised the volume very high and his service was live. I went with him through the whole service last night. Now, Kenneth Copeland is a person who said... He was talking to God about the fact that God, you've not done this for me. You've not done that for me. You've not done that for me. And he said, God said to him, Kenneth, stop blaming me for your failure to receive what I have already provided. Ah, that opened my eyes. Stop blaming me for your failure to receive what I have already provided. That's exactly what James is saying. God has already provided all things. Everything. Both spiritual and physical. He is not fault finding. He is generous. He gives to all men liberally. So the issue is not with God giving. The issue is with you receiving which is predicated on your knowledge of God's character. What knowledge of God's character do you have? Were you robbed by your Sunday school teachers many years ago to think that God will never give except you're a good guy? Well, if you were taught that, you were robbed. Because James says he doesn't find fault he gives to all men. I'm teaching good this morning. He didn't say let not that man think that God will give or God will not give. He said let not that man think that he shall receive. He shall receive. So the man who is praying is the person who determines the receiving. The man who is praying is the one who determines the receiving. Let not that man think he shall receive. So question, where does he stress? Where is the axiom in faith? 
So the action in faith is to receive. The receiving is what G James is stressing. Again, prayer does not influence God. You can see that idea in the Old Testament where it, hap where it appears that God wants to do something and prayer stopped him. And the Lord repented. And the Lord changed his mind. Well, you know the Old Testament people had a progressive revelation of God so their impressions interplayed with their statements. But we know that God is not a man that he should repent and God cannot lie. God does not change his mind. God does not react. God proacts. He sees the end from the beginning. Nothing takes him by surprise. So God doesn't change his mind. But we have established that, you know, is the kind of knowledge that they had. Because friends, God has never changed. God is not emotional like we, where you can just react. Or say, okay, I change my mind. I changed my mind. I told you before to come and pick a car. I'm not giving you the car again. I changed my mind. The way you behave has made me unhappy. And don't talk to me about that car anymore. I changed my mind. God says, by my stripes you were healed. But the way you've been behaving the last few weeks, you've told lies four times, you have cheated somebody three times, I changed my mind. You will die with that sickness. No, God is not a man. That's why he's called faithful. Faithful. That's his name. The steadfast love of the Lord never fails. His mercy will never come to an end. They are new every morning. He is consistently, constantly, constantly, constant. You can rely on him. You can depend on him. Because if he says yes, that yes remains yes. Irrespective and in spite of you. He doesn't say something depending on your behavior. He says something depending on his character. You can count on him. You can bank on him. That's why forever, oh God, thy word is settled in heaven. I'm teaching good this morning. If God changes his mind, it makes him not trustworthy. But because he doesn't change his mind, he's trustworthy. He's not influenced by conditions. And so God never changes his mind. He's only insinuated in the Old Testament. We hope you've been blessed by this message. And as you've been blessed, we want you to bless others by sharing this message abroad. If you're new here, can you don't leave without hitting on that subscribe button for us? Hit on that notification bell, like, and then comment in the comment section. We'll see you again on the next one. Stay tuned.